represent this decimal number. We're going to start with the reading and the writing. I need my place value chart. I'm going to make my place value chart. And remember, this place value chart is going to change a little bit because this is the decimal place value chart. My hundreds, my tens, and my ones, and the whole number. Here is my decimal point. And here is my tens using words. Ten it as a fraction, and my tens represented as a decimal number. And here are my hundreds in words, represented as a fraction and as a decimal number. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the number in the correct place value. The one represents one whole, which means that it goes in the ones place. The decimal, decimal number, with my decimal point I mean, and 38 hundreds go each digit in the correct place value. This is how I write my number in a correct place value. Now, the word form of the number. To read the number, first I'm going to start with my whole numbers. My first number is, what is this number? Somebody. One. The decimal point is referred, I use the word and for the decimal number, one, and I'm going to read the rest of the decimal number, 38, and I need to name the last place value. So this again is one and 38 hundredths. One and eight. And the last place value, the hundreds. This is the word form of the number. Also get my expanded form and my expanded notation. Just like we did with expanded form of, of a whole number, I'm going to start from my left. My first digit is the one. It represents one I'm going to complete. I don't need to add zeros to the right because there's a zeros. They're a placeholder, but I'm going to make them as a ghost. So I remember to fill up the space with my placeholder. Three. I bring down the three. Here's where the difference comes in a, a regular place value chart. I need to fill up the left. Not the right. The left. I definitely need my decimal point and I do need a zero. Now, on the other side, on the right, I don't need to add a zero in the hundreds, but I'm going to do it just to fill up the space with my placeholder. That's why I'm making it like this. And finally, I bring down the A in everything to the left. I have to complete it with zeros. It has to go with zeros. These are not optional. So this is the expanded form of a number. Now if you see again, I'm going to be able to get my number right. This is the expanded form of a number. Now, the expanded notation is the same. The expanded notation is the digit times its place value. 
So in this case, my first digit is one. So it's one times, where is the place value for the one? What's the place value for the one? The plus, the next digit is three times, what's the place value for the three? The, so it's one times 10. And here, this is why I put everything in, in fraction in decimal forms, because I need to copy these ones. So it's three times either one tenth as a fraction or one tenth as a decimal number. Plus eight, and I'm going to multiply it times its place value, either as a fraction or as a decimal number. So it's eight times either one hundredth as a fraction or one hundredth. So the expanded form of my number is one plus, how do I read this number? Three tenths plus, three plus how do I read this number? Eight hundreds plus eight hundreds. That's the expanded form of the number. I expanded notation is one times one. plus three times a fraction or as a decimal. And I'm writing both because we don't know how is it gonna be presented in my test. They could give me the fraction or they could give me the decimal number. That's why I'm writing both, okay? Plus eight times either one hundredth as a fraction or one hundredth as a decimal number.